Hello, my name is Austin Hayes. Today we are interviewing uh, Dr. Lorena Gomez. She is from Bogota, Colombia, and she will be uh, briefly discussing her experiences here in America as a first generation immigrant. Professor Gomez, um, are you a U.S. citizen? No, I'm not. Okay, um, why did you immigrate from Colombia to America? Okay, um, the reason why I came to the United States it was to study my master's first. I studied my master's in teaching English as a second language in, at the University of Mississippi mm -hmm. in Oxford. And then I went to the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa to study my PhD. So I actually came to study. Okay, um, describe your home, co home country. Um, is Colombia similar or, you know, how is it different from the U.S.? Very different. It's a third world country, so there is more poverty in comparison to the United States, which has surprised me a lot because when I came here to the United States, I never expected to see people living in the streets because I thought, okay, this is the first world country. So we, we're more aware about what is happening around the world. That's another thing that I have seen here in the United States. Every time that I watch news, because I like watching news, mm -hmm. it's happening in the United States. Mm -hmm. When I watch news in Colombia, I end up knowing about the world. I end up knowing what is happening in China and Europe, and also in the United States, because the United States is always important for us. Um, um, how long have you lived in the United States? And I have lived here three years and a half. Did you have family members or friends here when you immigrated? Or did you just not know anybody? No, I have never had family members here. Okay. Um, are there family members in Colombia that would like to come here with you? Mm, I don't. I mean, there are some of my two nephews and probably my niece. They are studying in, in their undergraduate mm -hmm. in the universities. And they are considering coming here to do what I did. Mm -hmm. um, so you learned in, in school, in grade school? Okay. Yes, at that and time the education was not as good as it is now, so people who are studying in high school now, they're almost bilingual, but mm -hmm. at that time I was not, so when I studied my, when I began studying my undergraduate, I knew some, but then I had to, I had, it was difficult for me, but when I came, um, I was fluent, so it was good for me. Okay, um, do you believe that immigrants, not just from Colombia, but all immigrants, should um, fully assimilate? The thing is that it's difficult to stop being you. Mm -hmm. I am a different kind of immigrant because I love speaking English and mm -hmm. I was, I was, that was my dream since I was young. I, I, I wanted to learn English, but I sometimes think about the people who are here in this country hating it language is in your soul. Mm -hmm. I, I think when you go to another country, you just have to try to do your best to give the best to the others. Mm -hmm. So maybe if that, if there is one human being who cannot learn English, but is honest and can contribute to the society, and does the best for the others and that person should g be given the chance of being seen in a better way. Mm -hmm. About the food, it's impossible. I, I could ask you in this moment, what is your favorite food? And you are going to tell me something that is from the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mo most of us who come from Latin America or from other countries love rice. Mm -hmm. I love rice. Mm -hmm. So how can you tell me not to eat rice? Right. You see, if that makes me happy and that is good for my well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you cannot stop being yourself. And I have always considered that United States from, from years. It, I, I love looking at the programs that 
in History Channel. So mm -hmm. the way that a lot of people came here when this was in the this was in the lands of indigenous people, like mm -hmm. we were in South America, there were a lot of indigenous people. So they were the real people who should stay in their countries. But now, all of a sudden, we were born from, I think in my blood, there is a Spanish blood mm -hmm. and indigenous blood in South America. So maybe in the American people who are here or somewhere else, there is blood of Italian, German mm -hmm. people. So it's the same. Now, it's, you cannot stop immigration, in right. other words. All of us, we just have to try to make the best with the people that are around us mm -hmm. and they have to try to assimilate and make others understand that they're different, respect mm -hmm. them. Did you feel welcomed in America? Yes, I have always felt welcome. I came to an academic setting, so mm -hmm. they have always appreciated what I do. And they have always supported me. Mm. So do you generally feel comfortable around other people that are immigrants? Would you, I mean, are you more comfortable around them than Americans or? Yes, why? Because we share that feeling of not having born here. Mm -hmm. So most of the times uh, I get I get to click very quickly with them. Right. Okay, because they also miss their families, I also miss my family, they miss their food, I also miss my food. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to, to get along with right. other immigrants. Um, do you identify yourself using the existing racial categories in the U.S. like um, Black, Latino, Asians, Vietnamese users? I, I want to tell you something that happened to me because that has always surprised me. Um, if I go back to Colombia, I take mm -hmm. a, a, a flight and it's I'm in Bogota in five hours from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And immediately in Bogota, I become white. In Colombia, I'm white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here, I'm considered Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm not anymore white. Um, and I want to tell you a story. When I was at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, I lost my passport mm -hmm. with the visa inside. So, and I was flying in December to Bogota to visit mm -hmm. my family. So I called my family and they say, ah, you have to get a document from the police saying that you lost your passport, otherwise they're not going to give you a new passport and a new visa in the American embassy in Bogota. And so I went and uh, to the police station in Tuscaloosa and I explained to the police that what had happened to me and that I had lost my passport and he was looking to me like he didn't understand mm -hmm. and I was telling him I need a paper saying that I lost my passport and he finally understood so he asked me a lot of information and mm -hmm. I was giving him the information and he completed I was busy so I took the paper to my apartment and after three or four days I read the paper mm -hmm. in the paper at the beginning they, he was describing me my name and all the things and in the race guess what he wrote he wrote white and I was looking at the paper and I said, that's, that's, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, all my life here in the United States, they have told me that I'm Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So that day I went to one of my classes and I told my professor and I told my, my friends what had happened to me. And one of my professors told me, well, you know, Marina, maybe that policeman thought that you were white because you were very fluent in, in English. Mm -hmm. So if nobody can tell that probably you were not born here. Right. So that day I thought, huh, oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So here in the United States, it's very difficult to describe race mm -hmm. because maybe I can lose my accent a little bit and I can be more fluent in English mm -hmm. and all of a sudden somebody is going to think that I'm white. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's, it's very surprising for me. So were there any racial categories in Colombia or were, you know, are y'all just considered, do y'all consider yourselves white? No, no, no. There are racial categories. Mm -hmm. Like, um, in Colombia, the color of my skin mm -hmm. um, is considered white. Mm -hmm. 
But there are, for example, people like you who are blonde mm -hmm. and you are a little bit whiter than I am, you are also white. Right. We're in the same category yes, with mm -hmm. blonde people. Mm -hmm. There are people who are darker and we call them black. Nevertheless, in this, I would say five years, mm -hmm. it had been, there had been a very strong movement and they don't want to be called anymore black. They, mm -hmm. they want to be called African Colombians. Mm -hmm. So, but there's still the category of black. So it's not black, it's, it's not as offensive to call a person negro black in Colombia because it's culturally acceptable. Hmm? Right. There are other people who are mixture, or who are in their traits, they have more traits of indigenous people mm -hmm. and they are called mulatos. Hmm? They live in the area of the Amazon. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And that's all, I think. There are others who are specific, but- Our second generation immigrant is Edith Barajas. She is from California and her dad immigrated here from Mexico. Okay, um, where were you born? I was born in a town called Ensenada, Baja, California. Um, and what year were you born? 1995. Okay, and are you a US citizen? Yes. How did you obtain your citizenship? Uh, my dad became a citizen while I was still under age, like, so. Okay. Okay. Um, where were your parents born? Do you know that? Yes, my mom was born in Baja, California as well, and my dad was born in a state called Guanajuato. Okay. Um, do you know much about your parents' home country? Um, the country as a whole, not a lot, but my like the state I was born in, I know probably a little bit more about there. Okay. Um, what la language does your parents speak at home? Spanish. Is that your primary language that you learned? Uh, yes. Um, do you know, normally feel more comfortable around other people that are immigrants to the United States, or do you feel more comfortable around people from the United States? Um, I don't think either of those. It's just kind of okay. Um, the person and not where they're from. <laughs> I understand. Do you believe people who are immigrants in this country should fully assimilate? which pretty much means if they move here that they should do the things that we do, they should eat the foods we do, they should fully act like we do. Well, taking it that uh, Mexican food is very, very popular here, not with Mexicans, sure. <laughs> um, do you identify yourself using the existing racial categories in the U.S., such as white, Latino, black, or Asian? Yes. How do you feel about attending school or living next door to people of different races? Fine. Pretty comfortable. It's interesting, especially here, because our school has so many foreign students. How do you feel about working with people of different races? Uh, comfortable, except, you know, there's always that one person who's a little weird about it towards other people. So how would you feel about interracial marriages? And what if your family, like somebody in your immediate family got married to somebody of a different race? How would you feel about that? Pretty positive. So you think growing up here has helped you? Oh yeah. Do you think that your views are the same as your parents? Um, in, in a lot of ways they are. I think their views are actually a lot more, maybe, liberal than a lot of other immigrant parents. When, what year actually did you come here? 2000... Third generation maybe? immigrant is Maurice Page. His grandmother immigrated here from England while his grandfather immigrated from Pakistan. He represents a very diverse cultural group. Hey, I'm gonna just ask you a few questions about you know your grandparents. So if you don't mind, could you start off by telling us your name and where your grandparents are originally from? Cool, my name is Maurice Page and my grandparents are from England and Pakistan. 
Where were you born and what year were you born in? Brooklyn, New York, January 17, 1996. Okay. And are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, I'm a U.S. citizen. Do you know a great deal about your grandparents? Um, not a whole lot. I know that my granddad came from Pakistan in 86. And how, how did you learn these things about you know him coming here? Did your parents tell you this or did they tell you? Actually, um, my mom's grandma actually told me about it. And then I finally met him when I was eight years old. He was pretty weird. So, what do you mean by weird? Like, it, from our standards of weird. Like, we see other people that have their mustaches all straightened out. His mustache looks like Mario, so I thought he was Italian at first. But he's not our second Italian. generation immigrant is Edith Barajas. She is from California, and her dad immigrated here from Our Mexico. third generation immigrant is Maurice Page. His grandmother immigrated here from England, and his grandfather immigrated here from Pakistan. So there is much cultural Third generation diversity. immigrant is Maurice Page. His grandmother immigrated here from England, while his grandfather immigrated from Pakistan. He represents a very diverse cultural group. Do they speak any other language you know besides English, or do you um, know their native language? I'm Jamaican as well. Um, she speaks Patois, which is old English. Do you know any of that? Like, what I go on, how you do it. Like that. Are you fluent in the language that your grandma speaks? No, I'm not very fluent, actually. Okay. Does she speak that language to you, or do you, you know, she just speak it around certain people or on the phone or anything? She speaks it around on the phone. She's talking to my mom. She speaks around us as well. We can understand it, but we can't fluently speak it back to you. Okay. Because, like I say, it's broken English. It's basically some of the English words, but with the accent and some of the vowels are different as well. Do you generally feel comfortable around other people who are immigrants in the U.S.? Yes, definitely. Why? Why do you feel more? Because I feel like my ancestors, they were immigrants as well, and they came over to the country just like them, so we're the same. Do you believe that people who are immigrants should fully be Amer like fully make themselves Americans or assimilate, try to be similar to us? No, why be similar to us? I mean, it, trying to be similar to somebody else is like, saying is apple and orange is the same it's two different things and what makes them unique is they're from somewhere else so you believe that partial assimilation is acceptable yeah could you explain why a little more okay well if you want to act like somebody else all the time everybody will be the same so that's why when immigrants come over here and they bring their culture over here we're kind of drawn and interested in that so our culture already over here it's the same you see it every single day but to see something different really opens up the eyes to the public and political parties as well. Did people identify themselves in any other way, such as religion or ethnicity? Um, yes, they did. Like, um, for instance, like if they were Islam, they'd say, oh, I'm Islam. And if you're Christian, you're Christian. But they bonded with each other. It wasn't a big difference. How do you feel personally about attending school with or living next door to people who you or who are who are of different races? Um, I think it is a merit and an amazing experience just to go over there and see how they act and interact with other people as well. So going about that, how do you feel about interracial marriages? Uh, how would you feel about an interracial marriage in your immediate family? Actually, we do have an um, interracial relationship in our family. Um, it's not really a big deal. I mean, if you love somebody, you love them for who they are, not for what they have. How have different generations in your family felt about associating with people of other race and ethnic? ethnic groups um it was never a problem so can you tell me more about your grandma i know you say your grandpa you know was from pakistan this is grandma. and she's from jamaica or england um she moved from england i think around the 70s or 80s and she moved over here and she brought my mom over here. that's when she was born and then she goes to jamaica to and fro but her grandma as well and her mom they're from jamaica okay so that's what makes her from england jamaica that's what so says how are your views of race and ethnicity different from or similar to your parents, grandparents, or siblings? My views are this. Um, some races, I don't understand they have their religions and all. So I do not try and push forth my religion onto them. But like some of my relatives, they try to push their religion to somebody else. Okay. So religion is big, you know, with certain parts of your family? Yeah. Okay. Well, I thank you again for allowing us to do this interview. Um, if there's anything else you would like to say about, you know, your grandparents, feel free. If not, thank you again. You're welcome.